thank you for your talk. Thank you, Tadasu. Um, and thank you for the invitation from the Japanese Association for Chest Surgery uh, for, the for the invitation to give a speech uh, in this prestigious uh, meeting. So I'm going to change the theme a little bit and talk about single port vets and a look into the future. So I won't have a lot of um, nice videos of lymph node dissections or lobectomies for single port. Uh, at disclosures of my involvement with J&J, Siemens, and Scanman. So um, this picture actually shows uh, a thoracotomy, uh, what we're used to in terms of three-port VATs, and also uh, the potential benefit of single-port VATs, although randomized trials are still needed uh, to look into that. Uh, Single-port VATs, if you look in the English literature at least, um, I think there's a gradual progression uh, from simple procedures in uh, more than 10 years ago for sympathectomy, right up to now the more complex procedures of segmentectomy and pneumonectomy. A lot of this um, more advanced uh, procedures has been uh, pioneered by uh, Dr. Gonzalez Rivers uh, from Spain. And in order to do single-port VATs, uh, a lot of the time you need some more specialized instruments. Um, Dr. Liu talked about uh, instruments that are narrow and also poten potentially angulated at the front uh, to help you with the dissection. And also um, instruments that are double hinged uh, with a very narrow shaft in the middle. And of course, uh, instruments that uh, give you articulation, for example, the stapler, are all important to help you achieve a small wound in single port. Now, after the pneumonectomy and segmentectomies, in fact, in the last one or two years, there's been a rapid progression of what can be achieved with single port vats. Uh, you can do now sleeve resections being reported or even uh, pulmonary artery resection and reconstruction, double sleeve resections, um, et cetera, on single port vats uh, have been reported now. So people are beginning to ask whether single port vats, whether it's safe. Um, this is a paper published last year from the Spanish group, Dr. Gonzalez Rivers group, and they uh, report very good results of almost 0% uh, 30-day mortality and a uh, relatively short hospital stay uh, with a low uh, drain output for this uh, group of 90-odd uh, patients. For us in Hong Kong and in collaboration with the uh, Korea University, we looked in our uh, little cohort of uh, 150 patients, and uh, they're relatively young patients that we perform single port major lung resection on, mostly in males, a lot of them are smokers, and with very good lung function, in fact. The tumor diameter, perhaps you would expect, are not very big, around three centimeters the mean, and also the incision size is around four centimeters for the single port, with an average operative duration, including lymph node dissection, of two and a half hours. For the conversion, uh, we have a conversion rate of 5.3% for the single port, and these are the eight cases that we had to convert. Uh, two cases uh, converted to thoracotomy, and six cases converted to two or three port vats. The conversion reasons were made, some for bleeding, some for adhesions, and some for lymph nodes that are very stuck, and a couple for uh, basically tumor that's crossed the fissure and we need a better assessment with more ports or thoracotomy. The range of procedures that we've done uh, in these 150 cases, including s a couple of uh, segmentectomies, mostly lobectomies, and a couple of lobectomies with some wedge uh, on top, and a handful of bilobectomies and two pneumonectomies for this cohort. And you can see uh, they're mostly for early stage, as you'd expect. Stage one is 72% in this uh, cohort, stage two, 22%, and stage three, a 6%, and nothing beyond that in terms of staging. Uh, for the complications, uh, we have a complication rate of um, different complications that you expect from uh, other forms of VATs, two port and three port VATs. Uh, for example, air leak, uh, AF, uh, reinsertion of chest drain, pneumonia, chylothorax, respiratory failure, and each of those are just a handful of each um, and mostly under 3 or 4% uh, in terms of uh, incidence. We have two cases of mortality, uh, making it 1.3% mortality, and one was at 49 days and one was at 60 days after the operation from mainly septic causes. This is the Kaplan Meyer curve from the 150 cases we did. Uh, for the stage one, is 96% for at two years, and for stage two and beyond, is 83% at two years. So, you know, we've achieved a fairly safe um, cohort of patients that we are able to do a major lung resection on for uniportal vats. So, what else uh, is on the horizon for uh, single port vats? Now, uh, Dr. Liu briefly mentioned. Um, his uh, work with a uh, subsiphoid approach to single port vats. 
And um, with single port vats, uh, incision between the ribs, uh, potentially intercostal neuralgia is still a problem. But putting the incision in a subsiphoid position may reduce that risk. And uh, you know, uh, you have the expert in, in the room to ask uh, this procedure later on. Uh, due to interest of time, I won't show the video. This, this is essentially the four centimeter incision with an Alexis uh, type retractor that's used uh, for a left upper lobe lobectomy reported by uh, Dr. Liu first. Other forms of technology that we can use to help single port vats lobectomy uh, are available. Uh, some of the criticisms of single port VATS is that uh, you lose some of the potential digital palpation because of the limited access. You have a limited access for the instruments and the camera view. And in general, some people criticize that the tumor assessment and lesion identification uh, for small lesions can be a problem. And uh, we can think about ways potentially to improve it. One way to help assess the tumor or to identify the tumor in single port VATS where the access is limited is to have a uh, multi-modality imaging guided operating room with a on-table uh, CT uh, scanner that can help you identify small lesions. This is a uh, right lower lobe uh, GGO lesion of less than one centimeter, around eight millimeters. And um, you know, it'd be hard pressed to really find this uh, without uh, some kind of imaging. Of course, you can do preoperative uh, localization uh, radiologically. So, you know, on table, uh, we perform the uh, image guided hybrid theater, single port vats, uh, wedge resection, and frozen section for this patient with a GGO and also a single port uh, lobectomy because it was found on frozen section to be uh, adenocarcinoma. And uh, that was success successfully performed two months ago. So, hybrid theater, there are a lot of potential within that uh, area, uh, particularly in single port vats. For those, uh, 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 areas where they, you don't have a hybrid theater, there are these mobile o, uh, arm uh, cone CT scanners that are available that may help you identify lesions uh, in the operating theater of the future. We did talk about uh, having smaller wounds, maybe a potential in terms of improvement for single port vats, but you do need narrower and more articulation within the instruments. And uh, Dr. Liu did briefly talk about a smaller, narrower uh, shafted instrument with more articulation in terms of the stapler which is on coming uh, in the pipeline. Also, I personally use a 120 degree uh, endochameleon camera so that it gives you the best view for single port. And here you can see the um, single port uh, using the endochameleon camera. So I'm not moving the camera at all and with 120 degree articulation of the camera using the prism mechanism, you can actually see the whole thoracic cavity from the apex right down uh, to the diaphragm and back onto the anterior chest wall without actually talking the instrument. On the pipeline also are 3D uh, endo eye or 3D uh, cameras that give you uh, articulation as well as a, a great uh, view as well. If you look into the future, you know, we have a lot of cables around in the on the table that we can potentially get rid of. And one way to get rid of the cables is to get rid of the cables for the thoracoscope, which is to have the light source built in within the thoracoscope and also to have a wireless antennae that transmits the image. Therefore, you don't need the two wires that usually come out of normal thoracoscopes. Now, with this kind of remote camera technology, what you can go further to do is to actually place the camera within the thoracic cavity itself uh, through the single port. And therefore, the camera doesn't need to come out of the wound itself. And once you place the camera within the thoracic cavity, you can actually control the camera with a magnet from the outside and give you different views and adjust the view uh, that you require from the single incision. This is the kind of image you can get from a transmission, from a remote camera, from a magnetic uh, camera that I've been talking about. Now this is the uh, single port VAT setup that I have at the moment currently uh, at our hospital with uh, several instruments, a stapler and a scope. So in the future, what you may see is a narrower and more angulated uh, stapler. And also, uh, we may not need these cables in the future for the camera. And potentially, we may be able to put several cameras within the thoracic cavity that transmit the image and the lighting remotely and can provide you with the four different views that you need uh, to see the dissection and to place the stapler across. And looking way into the future, 
in terms of robotics in, in single port VATS, what we can expect perhaps is that we have a single port robotic arm that can go into the thoracic cavity to do the operation for us. Now for the robotic system currently, you will need three or four ports to do a robotic lobectomy. The limitation there at the moment is that because the shoulders, the body and the head of the robot is outside of the thoracic cavity. Now if you're able to put the head, the body, the shoulders and the arms inside the thoracic cavity, insert everything inside the thoracic cavity, then what you can do is actually do the thoracic dissection with a single port of 1.5 centimeters. So in summary, advances in VATS in the form of single port VATS may further reduce excess trauma, and advances in technology really in the future is likely to improve the technique a lot. Thank you very much for your attention.